what was the most disappointing thing to you about how the defense played Saturday and how fixable is that? Uh, probably the most disappointing thing was the inability to stop the run. Uh, we knew going into the game that that would, that would have to be a priority. And we weren't able to do that consistently. Um, I feel like uh, there were some times, you know, if you look at the first quarter that we played well, we stopped the run, we got them into passing scenarios that we had hoped to get them in. Um, but consistently, uh, we didn't do a very good job of that. So uh, that was disappointing. And then we needed to stop 87. We needed to stop their tight end. And uh, going in, we felt like we had a good plan to do that, and we didn't execute it all the time to get it done. And those were really the two kind of lead-in goals going into the game. And we, we didn't get that done. So um, we have to pull from some of the positives uh, from the game. Uh, but obviously, uh, the performance is uh, underwhelming on our defense. We know that. Uh, so we got to do a better job coaching. And we got to do a better job playing. And uh, we just got to keep moving forward. And uh, we feel like at one point it's going to come together and click. Uh, but right now we're struggling. And we know that. The players know it. And the coaches know it. And uh, that's where we are. But realistically, we still feel good about being able to put it all together. And it's just a matter of time before we get that done. Up front specifically, is there something that they're not doing in the fundamental sense? Is it physicality? Uh, what is something that they can maybe adjust here in the coming weeks? And what are maybe some things that are going to take a lot longer? Well, I think it's kind of um, when you look at the, at the run game when it's not clicking, I think it's kind of a mixture. Um, sometimes it's one guy out of a gap, you know, so it all, it all comes together with the defensive line fitting and staying in their gaps. The linebackers and safeties or whoever are responsible for fitting those gaps. Everybody fits those gaps accordingly. So one guy can be out, and uh, one, one guy can be can jump his gap or be out of his gap, and you know that really allows poor defensive performance when it comes to the run game. But um, sometimes it's physicality. Sometimes it's a guy out of his gap. Um, sometimes it's a pressure on that. Uh, somebody's going to have to overlap and account for a potential open gap somewhere else uh, in the defense and we don't overlap. So um, there are several things, all fixable, um, but I think to answer your question, it's a mixture of things. Gene, you and Matt have both said that the defense isn't improving week to week. What are some telltale signs that you look for in practice, like checkpoints that they have to hit mm -hmm. each week to show that improvement? Well, I think in practice, uh, I, I got to give the guys a lot of credit. Every practice, even including yesterday, uh, everybody goes out there with a purpose and everybody goes out there. And we see improvement. We do. In practice, things slow down a little bit so you can talk through some things, you can correct things that are not right. Uh, their attitude's great. Uh, they continue to practice really, really well. Um, and, you know, I, I do see some areas of improvement. I think Saturday, uh, I think our corners played better. And we struggled there some earlier in the season. So we're seeing some spots uh, where practice is carrying over the games. Do we see that as a total defense all the time? No, we don't. Uh, and that's probably the most frustrating part. And I think everybody's frustrated. I think sometimes the players get frustrated. Sometimes the coaches get frustrated. Um, but everybody's on the same page. Everybody's continuing to work. And in practice, uh, I've been really proud of these guys because every practice they come out there to improve and get better. And we feel like that going into the game. And then, you know, obviously every every week we got to recalibrate and readjust and go back and do it again. Um, and they did a good job of that yesterday as well. Can you point to one of your defenses in the past where it's kind of, as you said, underwhelmed through the first four weeks of the season, but there has been that point where it didn't click for them? I mean, I can't think back that far. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is we, we can't compare this to anything else in the past. This is a different team. It's a different era. It's a different uh, – it's, it's, there's just a lot of difference. You know, you can't go back and say, well, you know, when, when you were here the first time, it was, it was different. So um, we have to continue to adapt and adjust. 
uh, to what we see the problems are. And we got to continue to do that on a, on, a, on a consistent basis. As I said earlier, I truly believe that it's going to click and we're going to get the game that we want to get. And that means consistency. Um, right now, we haven't got it. So every day is a work in progress uh, with the coaches. Every day is a work in progress with the players. Um, but one thing that is great and 100% true is everybody's all in. And we're all in this together. And uh, we, we, as a group, understand that um, nobody's been happy with any of these performances. Um, but that's what football is, right? you got to man up and go out there every day and try to improve and get better. And as long as everybody's in on that, then uh, we'll always have a chance to improve, and, and we will improve. Matt mentioned a disconnect and kind of backed off that word a little bit. Why do you think maybe what's happening in practices and even from the spring and preseason hasn't translated to any sort of improvement across the board game? I mean, it's going to repeat a lot of things you've said already, I, I, I'm sure. Yes. So I'm wondering, is there something that's not clicking with, with players or scheme or something that is just not getting much better each game? Well, again, I think it's kind of isolated, right? Um, we're playing a lot of the same defense. We are adjusting as well. Um, but it's one guy, you know, in defense, in run defense, everybody's responsible for a gap. In pass defense, everybody's responsible in coverage, right? If it's zone coverage, you have the people in your zone that you're covering that you're responsible for. It's man coverage, it's obvious you have a man. And um, what's happening is there's isolated incidents um, that keep popping up uh, where one guy is not necessarily doing his job, but 10 others are. Um, that's what's kind of the frustrating part in the repeat offending or repeat offenders, not that it's on a guy or a group, it's kind of everybody. So us as coaches, that's our job to really look at our groups and look at our segments and players and figure out why this is happening and, and where the disconnect is that on game day we can't necessarily see it. Now, on game day we do sometimes get some different things and we prepare for, but that's football, right? You have to be able to adapt and adjust to those on game day. Uh, and sometimes we've been good at that and sometimes we haven't. Um, so you can't put it on a player or a position. Um, it starts with us as coaches, me first. Um, to be able to get these things done and, and pass down to our guys so that we can play consistently. Uh, and that's not happening at a very good rate right now. So we're working day and night to, to fix those issues. Um, and uh, I feel very confident we can get it done. And in terms of asking uh, Coach Brown about this, you like to bring four uh, to get pressure on the quarterback. Matt said y'all looks, looks a lot on Saturday. What are your philosophy on that? Like, you're not getting pressure for, I mean, how many times did y'all blitz? And what's wrong with this blitz? It's not getting there if you are blitzing. And then the philosophy of, of dropping seven versus four, bringing five and dropping six. Like, your, your philosophy on, on right. getting pressure on the quarterback and making that happen when you do bring it. Right. Well, number one, bringing pressure on a quarterback has to do with a couple of different things. Uh, how are they in protection? Um, how is the quarterback when he actually is getting uh, pressure in his face with those type of um, blitzes? And then how are you in coverage? How do you feel about holding up on in the secondary versus the opponent's receiver? So, you know, all of that goes together. There's not really a cookie cutter, I believe in bringing seven, I believe, believe in bringing six. Um, I believe in bringing pressure on downs where you feel like it can affect the quarterback. Uh, and you can get off the field. Uh, we did do more of it Saturday. Um, there's a couple times when I thought the pressures were there, he got rid of the ball fast. Um, there's a couple times when the pressure got home. Um, there was a couple times when we ran a pressure and there was somebody out of place and we got a quarterback scramble and he got out of the pocket when we had everything covered. So again, that kind of goes back to, uh, you know, even when you pressure and you blitz, right? Like there's a guy that's always responsible to make sure that the quarterback is contained. If he doesn't do that job and the quarterback gets out of the pocket, then he has time to, you know, readjust to whatever the coverage is. So that happened Saturday. So, but philosophically, we know right now we're not getting a lot of pressure. Uh, and I'm good with pressuring as long as I feel like we can hold up in the back end um, and we have a chance to possibly get something home or get some pressure in the guy's face 
um, that will actually affect him. Um, so that's, you know, when you go into every game, that's what you look at, right? How much do we pressure? Does it really affect him? How good is the offensive line in protection? And then you kind of formulate that plan from there. Gene, there's a lot of experts out there. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Apparently so. Uh, who, who's, who seem to, you know, believe blowing it up would be a solution. I'm not sure what that means, but, but you know, do you, do you find yourself feeling like maybe you should try to shake up some personnel in, in certain spots? I mean, you know, we've seen more of Travis Shaw, we've seen more of, of Will Hardy. I mean, it just for you, mm -hmm. you know, personally, do you, do, you, do you start talking to yourself about that or think about that? Like, like let's, let's, I know you're putting the guys out there and you think of their best, but good for best players. Uh, I understand that. But, like, I mean, is that is maybe shaking up the personnel in some, some spots, something to look at? You know, that's a very fair question, uh, to be honest with you. You know, when you go through times of struggle in anything, um, sometimes there's a tendency for people to uh, start wanting to, you know, just recreate and reinvent. Uh, and in maybe some things in life that works. Um, in football, it doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, we have to believe in what we're doing. We have to believe in our players. We have to believe in schematically that there can be tweaks and adjustments in there, both schematically and with personnel, to your point, right? Um, that gives us a chance to be, um, I guess, more consistent. Uh, but I'm not one of these guys that looks at the final results and then says, oh my gosh, nobody's ever right. Everybody's wrong because that's not what's happening. It's our job as coaches right now to make sure that we be realistic. Nobody's happy with the performance players or coaches, right? Uh, but in the same sense, we're in, almost in the middle of the season. So looking at other guys that contribute, uh, that can contribute, uh, obviously that's obviously always a valid point, right? Who can help us? Uh, who's coming along in practice as we evaluate them to feel like we can put them on the field and they can help us? Uh, so all of those things are true, but I'm just never gonna be that guy that I'm not happy with the results, so let's blow it up, start over. Um, I think that's unrealistic. I think it's better to tweak, um, continue to try to stay on a consistent track uh, to get the product we want. Um, we want the product to look like the first quarter looked. I mean, that's the bottom line, and we know we have it in us. Uh, we believe in the players that we can get that done. Um, has it happened yet? No, it has not. But like I said, we're gonna keep working to make sure that uh, the consistency is eventually there, and it's not. Uh, but, but as far as starting all over and just knee-jerk reaction and trying to do all these different things that I'm sure everybody out there has great answers to, that's good, and when they have this job, they can do that. But I've got this job right now, so uh, I'm gonna do it the way I see fit, and uh, football's a crazy game, like I told the defense yesterday. When you sign up for this, you sign up for all the ugly parts, right? Good, bad, and ugly, and that's where we're at. So we gotta fix it. That's what men do. We go back, we look at the problems, and we try to fix them. And it's not on the players, it's not on the coaches, it's on all of us, and it starts with me. And I've gotta make these decisions to get it fixed. Um, so everything lies with me, and then it goes down from there. So again, I feel very confident we can get this done. I think consistency is the main event, um, but blowing everything up and starting over with both either personnel or scheme uh, is not an option. Just as a quick follow up there, I was always think about you mentioning, I think it was the summer, in terms of the defensive line, just the bodies of these things, the size and, and the different pieces you have to work there. In terms of production on the defensive line, is that an area that has disappointed you? Just the production, what they've been able to, I'm not saying like, what they've been able to produce and not produce. Is that, is that a disappointment to you? Let me just say this. Um, I'll, never put, uh, I'll never put that on a segment because when you play poor defense, it's disappointing in general. Uh, and there's, you can't point to a group 
that at times is not disappointing. Uh, do we need more production on the defensive line? Yeah. We need more production at linebacker. We need more production at safety. We need more production at jack. We need more production at corner. So we need more production everywhere. Uh, but I don't think there's any segment on our defense right now where the coach of that segment, me, or that segment feels like they've arrived. Everybody's got to play better. Um, everybody's got to be more productive. Um, that's that's the bottom line. So that's our charge, starting with me, and we got we got to get there. What expectations do you have for this defense against Virginia Tech, and have you guys set any specific goals for Saturday? Well, we haven't really talked about that. We're still in the mix of evaluating and, and assessing Virginia Tech. I expect us to play much better Saturday. Um, we spent a lot of time yesterday going back over the film and looking at all the minute details again of when we weren't good, why. Uh, and I expect us to play much better Saturday against Virginia Tech. We've got four games to look at a lot of things. Um, we've got four games to evaluate some poor performances. Uh, but we've also had a time to evaluate when we were playing well and we were playing good, why. Um, so we spent a lot of time on that yesterday went out and practiced, we put that game behind us. Uh, the good news is we're three and one going into conference play and our guys have not lost confidence. Our guys are 100% all in in meetings and practice every day. Uh, and I'm proud of them for that because if you listen to the outside chatter that I'm sure is out there, um, you know, young guys could, could get discouraged, but I, I don't think our guys are, um, at least not when they're in this building. And, you know, that's hard to control, but they know where we have to go. They know where we are. Uh, they know what it takes to get to where we need to, to get. And I feel like Saturday we'll play much better. Coach Jizzy, um, what was your conversations like with Coach Brown Saturday night and yesterday when you two were getting together, trying to figure mm -hmm. things out? Obviously, we worked together. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had plenty of conversations like this. So I was wondering what the one coming off Notre Dame was like. Well, Coach is very disappointed, like we all are. Um, you know, we have conversations about what's next, how we can fix it. Um, he's frustrated, rightly so. I've been in his seat. Um, I've known him for a long time. Uh, and he expects more, and he should get more. And we're not giving him what he deserves and what the University of North Carolina deserves as far as results on defense. We're not giving him that. And um, again, that falls on me, and I'm a big boy and I can handle it. And so we have some very candid conversations about uh, where this is going and what we need to do. Um, again, I'm not gonna think, I'm not gonna say that there's a sense of panic whatsoever, but there's very candid conversations about how this is gonna get better. And we can do that because we've been in this a long time together. Not a long time together, we've been in this a long time and we've previously been together. So um, I think it's just, um, I think it's frustrating. And I feel, uh, I feel responsible to get this thing turned around for Mac Brown and for University of North Carolina. And that's what the conversations are. There's no magic, there's no, you know, of course we talk personnel, which um, is an obvious discussion, right? We talk scheme, uh, we talk what happened, uh, we talk inconsistency. We talk all the things that you guys see. Um, and we have very candid conversations about it. We always will. Um, but he's uh, but he's frustrated, and rightly so. Are there certain things he's like, we need to stop this, we need to board this? Is there particular things he points out that he stresses? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously right. stopping the run. I mean, that's probably the big, most frustrating part is that we haven't been able to have the ability to consistently stop the run. Um, that's that's the number one thing that he stresses and that I stress and that we talk about together. How are we going to stop the run? Because we haven't been able to do that on a consistent basis. So that's the first discussion that him and I usually have uh, on Sundays. Yeah. How do you how do you kind of guard against the frustration spilling over to finger pointing? So there, so so an incident like uh, Brian. You know, 
football is a crazy game, and it's it's really interesting. Um, guys want to win. Guys want to win. They put in a lot to win, uh, and then sometimes you know you see some frustration boil over. Um, I don't think it's really any different than in your family, right? You know, one of the things that our guys absolutely, truly do is they love each other. That doesn't mean they all hang out with each other every day, on the weekends. But I think they truly love each other and respect each other uh, as competitors. Uh, and they all want to win. Uh, and when you're not doing as well as you had hoped, uh, sometimes those things happen just like they happen in my own family, with my daughters and my sons, right? Uh, but you move forward and you get past that because there's truly a, a, a true high level of care and, and trust and, and love for each other in there. That's what makes coaching these guys so fun for me because they really do do that. You're going to see that happen. It happens with coaches. And I've seen it happen with coaches on the sideline. I'm not saying it happened with us. I'm just saying you see that in the competitive world of sports, right? Um, but one thing I can confidently say is that it's our job as leaders to make sure when things aren't going well, and I'm just talking about defense, I'm talking about on teams. When you're a coach of a team, whatever your position is, right? Your job as a leader is to make sure that through tough times and chaos and bad times, that those things don't happen. Um, and so I feel really good about that. I think you're gonna see some, you can see some brush ups here and there. We see them in practice, they happen in practice when there's not everything on the line, right? Um, but that's, that's kind of football, that, that's what happens. But um, there, there's not gonna be any finger pointing. There's not gonna be any, you can't. I mean, we can put, I mean we, if you wanna start pointing fingers, you can point fingers at every single human involved, right? Um, so that's, that's not a realistic deal. But I think our guys have really handled all of this very well. Um, and the fact that there's a brush up here and there, you know, that happens, uh, but we have absolutely zero concern about that. Did you, did you talk with Taylor or, or Ryan to the panel or anything from you alls side to figure that out? Well, we handled that in the locker room. We handled that afterwards, and it, and it was nothing. You know, it was absolutely nothing. In five quarters, uh, at least ten or more first downs. Is there sort of a snowball? Do you sense a snowball effect for these guys? Can that become psychological? What is the remedy? Yeah, it's really interesting. We, we, we notice that, you know, when we're playing well and we're getting off the field and doing things like that, um, it's really, really good. Then all of a sudden, you know, they, they get a first down and then they hit a big run. And it seems like there has been somewhat of a cumulative effect with that. Um, and that's where we got to drop the anchor and stop some of these, right? And, you know, that's, that's kind of been the MO. We do well, we do well, we do well. And then all of a sudden something happens and there's a couple first downs and they hit a big play. Uh, and that's where we're going to have to, we have to step up. We have to understand that, you know, um, on those type of drives, somebody's got to make a play. Some, there's something good that's got to happen. Um, but, it, but it definitely has been kind of a trend in some games where, again, that's where the inconsistency seemed to pop up, right? So um, that's definitely part of the conversations that we have. I would imagine the maddening things that you've seen so far at times, that has to be. Yeah, it's, yeah. When, when you talk about the frustration, right, those, those things are frustrating. But, um, you know, again, I think that – I don't think there's anybody that can read something on the Internet or, um, at least in this building, read something on the Internet they don't know. I mean, we all know that, right? The players know it. The coaches know that. And, again, it goes back to um, being consistent and getting these things fixed because it's – you know, we're all disappointed. Um, we're all frustrated, uh, but again, that's what you sign up for when you when you play this game. You gotta go, we gotta go fix it, starting with starting with me. Coach, I'm just curious, um, what were your thoughts about that pass interference on the second play? Do you agree with the call? Or... Well, I don't really want to talk about officiating, uh, but uh, it was a close call, and they called it, and we got to live with it. We can't take it back. So I'm just curious, after a home game. Like what your process is, like do you head back up to your office and turn the tape on immediately? Do you go home, have a sandwich, go down <laughs> to your, you know, your cellar, and, and don't come out for the rest of the night? Like in, in terms of just watching the game sure. back, 
Like, sure. are you doing it alone? You're like, you know, are you taking 10 pages of notes? Just like, what, what do you do when the game ends and you're starting to get back into a right. second? So when I leave here, I will grab something to eat and then I'll go home and I'll watch the game very thoroughly that night, no matter how late it is. I'll watch it that night. I can't wait till the next morning. So I'll watch it that night, take notes, get up again in the morning, watch it again, um, and probably watch it about uh, a third, definitely a third time before we all get together as coaches uh, and watch that together. So we'll watch it three or four times before we actually go meet with the players. Gene, looking at the forecast, at least initially for this weekend, it looks like it's probably going to be pretty, pretty rainy in Chapel Hill. But have you and the staff taken that into account yet, or are you sort of waiting to see what happens and if the forecast changes in the next couple of days? I'm glad you told me that because I haven't checked the forecast, so that's really that's that's interesting, right? Um, no, we have not really talked about that. Um, usually, we wait uh, till we get closer because. In my experience with weather people, they're not really they're not really the most accurate. So we'll just wait and kind of see as we get closer. What do you do with the changes of weather? How do you do with the twist of weather there? Yeah. All right, Gene. Thanks, guys and ladies. Thank you, Gene.